What's going on everybody and welcome back to Johnny K Picks and in this video I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions along with the bets that I like so far for UFC Vegas 98 Roy Val versus Tyra. First things first please hit that like button for me subscribe if you are new or if you just haven't subscribed yet turn on those notifications so you know when I put out my videos when we go live on Wednesdays or Saturdays uh leave some comments below uh how well you thought the judges did at 307 all that good stuff I'll uh, also check out my patreon patreon.com slash Johnny K picks I put out all my early UFC content my bets um NFL survivor pools UFC survivor pools a lot of people got out last week or this last card I should say so we're going to start up probably a new one here shortly. We'll see who wins that one. So definitely uh, give that a look. You can join for free or you can support for $5.99 a month. So, yeah, last night was an interesting card, to say the least. Um, the judges had to get their little grubby little fingers and ruin everyone's day. So we'll get to that uh, right away because I can't wait to talk about a lot of these fights. So. Yeah, let's do that right now. We got the first fight was McGee versus Means. Pretty quick fight. Uh, McGee got that takedown and got on his back and got the rear naked choke or neck crank, whatever you want to say. Um, I had McGee. I had McGee as a bet. I thought this fight was going to be a 50-50 fight. I didn't think it would go down that way, but it did, and uh, I'll take it. And good win from McGee. Uh, Tisha versus Carla. I thought Tisha won this one 29-28 pretty clearly. Um, I know some people thought that Carla won, did not think that whatsoever. She did not win rounds two or three, but good win from Tisha. Um, you know, you can even make a case for Tisha winning round one. Um, but I still gave that one to Carla. It was very close though, but good fight from Tisha. Um, she did look pretty good. So we'll see what happens with her. Ryan Span versus OSP. Span was able to get OSP out of there. So OSP definitely looked his age. But let's be honest, guys. Ryan Span was about one minute away from gassing. So good thing he got it done in a minute 35. Good win from him. Um, here's where the night started to go a little uh, sideways, if you want to say. Almeida versus po Poteria. The ref in this fight just felt like giving... You know, Almeida, four eye pokes in a nut shot. No warnings, no hard warnings, no points deducting. So, yeah, Almeida won the fight, but dang, dude, like, Poteria took damage all fight, and he was taking eye pokes and nut shots with no repercussions. So I kind of feel bad for him for that way, but he did lose that fight. Either way, like I said, this is where the night starts to go a little downhill. So Almeida couldn't get the finish, but it is what it is. Um, Alexander Hernandez versus Austin Hubbard. Um, yeah, you'll see where it says split decision. This should not have been a split decision. It should have went, uh, 29, 28 Hernandez. I mean, there's no way on earth that Austin Hubbard won 30, 27, this fight, which one judge gave Austin Hubbard a 30, 27, which is why it was a split. There's no way Austin Hubbard won. He barely won one round. I'll give him one round, but he did not win the first two rounds 100%. So, like I said, this is where the judging um, gets their little fingers in here and starts to ruin everyone's night. But luckily, Alex Hernandez was still able to get the win because he did win 29-28. Uh, Lucindo versus Rodriguez. Again, you could debate this one. It's a very, very close fight. Um, it did go to split. I know some people thought Marina won, and I totally don't blame you, but this is a very close fight. I wouldn't say the judges ruined a lot of people's night for this one, but it was a very close fight. I also think the refing in this was a little suspect as well. They uh, stood up Lucindo a couple times very quick. I know the one time they did because she was digging her chin in the eye socket or something like that. I could be wrong, but... Um, but yeah, this was one of the refing debacles of the night where they just kept standing up Lucindo when she was on top for whatever reason. And literally like after 10 or 15 seconds. So keep it consistent, which you didn't do. You did not keep it consistent as we go up in the fight. I will, or fights card. I will tell you why. Um, crazy fight here. We got Buckley versus wonder boy. What I actually personally think that wonder boy won the first two rounds. Now it could have went one and one couldn't like that is okay but you can make an argument for wonder boy winning the first two rounds and then uh luckily buckley got that third round ko so good win from buckley 
He couldn't get the wrestling going as well as I'm sure a lot of people thought. I kind of thought he wasn't going to either. But, um, hey, he was able to get the finish, so that won him the fight. So good win from him, and we'll see what happens with him. Uh, Kayla pretty much dominated Ketlin Vieira. Um, we'll move on up because that's about it. We knew all that. We knew that was going to happen, right? I think we all did. Freak injury for Roman, or I'm sorry, for uh, Holland. Um, so there was a rib injury. Um, you know, couldn't really tell how that fight was going to play out. I mean, it looked like Roman was going to be able to get takedowns easily, but uh, Kevin just, I don't know, broke his rib, fractured, whatever. So it is what it is. Again, this is another reason why you just kind of just don't bet Kevin Holland and or pick him. I picked Kevin Holland, but this is the kind of stuff, not to say that this one was his fault, but it's just, I feel like bad luck and bad judgment always follow the Kevin Holland. And so it's just, he's probably just going to have to be banned from picking. It's just going to be a blind bet on the opposite side whenever Kevin Holland fights, unless he's fighting a bum. I mean, Roman's not a bum, but if he is fighting a bum, then we all decide. All right, guys. Mario Batista versus Jose Aldo. I will be the one to say it. I'm sure there's others that feel the same way. I thought Jose Aldo, Aldo won this fight. Um, Mario Batista did not do anything in round three except to hold him up against the cage. Didn't do any damage up against the cage. I don't understand why the ref wasn't interjecting even more than what he did. I know he tried once and then Mario immediately shot a takedown and he went up against the cage and didn't get a takedown. He should have stopped it again. But Aldo won this fight. Um, Mario literally did nothing except in the first round. He won the first round. He didn't win the second round and Jose won the third just by damage alone. Where was this treatment and the judging scorecards when Dolgarian did the same exact thing but better for like four minutes and 30 seconds of the round instead of like two and a half minutes of the third round against C-Rod because they gave C-Rod that round and that was ridiculous because C-Rod literally didn't do anything that fight but or that round sorry but again it is what it is um I'm sure they didn't want Jose to win but I thought he won he should have won he did more damage in the second and third round and it is what it is so and here's the worst one of the night Juliana Pena wins against Raquel which was ridiculous Probably the big one of the biggest robberies of 2024. Um, Pena won rounds two and three. She did not. Round one was the closest round, but it was a clear Raquel round. Raquel won rounds four and five, and there's no way Pena won this fight. It's ridiculous. Not even one media member gave Pena the win. I think there might have been one person to say that it was a draw, which was ridiculous too. But, uh, Pennington clearly won 48, 47. And yeah, now we have to sit back and watch Kayla destroy Pena when they fight next. Now, if Pena is going to try to duck her and try to get Nunez out of retirement, it's just going to be a ridiculous thing. And that better not happen. I better see Kayla fight Pena very soon. And I want to see domination. Sorry. It's not that I hate Pena, but this is just ridiculous. And the judges completely ruined this fight. But a very fun fight. Let's go to a fun fight, finally. Pereira versus Khalil. Khalil looked really good in the first two rounds. I thought he won the first. Second was close. I, I would have probably gave it to him. But then Pereira started pushing the pace, and Khalil just couldn't keep up, and he kept getting touched up, and then finally got the knockout in the fourth round. I'll be honest, it went a little bit longer than I thought. I didn't think it would get to the fourth round. I thought it would be one, two, or three. But good win from Pereira, and uh, he continues his domination. Uh, good showing from Khalil, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I think this was Khalil's first five-round fight, so he's normally, you know, and he usually slows down, like, in the third round. So give him all the credit there. And, uh, yeah, that was UFC 307. We'll go to my bets, which is going to be depressing. But here they are. I had Aldo, should have won that bet. I had Court McGee won that one. Had Tora or the Pennington Pennington parlay, which I should have won that bet. Didn't win that bet. Hubbard plus three and a half. You know, like I said, I thought Hubbard lost 29 28. So I'm okay with that. That 30 27 was ridiculous, but it helped out my bet even more. Pereira won that bet. And then also with the freak injury with Kevin Holland, uh, that ruined the over one and a half. But that fight was probably going to go over one and a half if there wasn't a freak injury. So I lost that bet. So again, I had two judges 
basically ruined two bets and then a freak injury for my other one to make me lose minus 0.38 units on the night. Like I said, it's disgusting to even have to show that I lost or had a losing night when clearly it probably shouldn't have been at the very least. I probably should have won about two units. Um, but in a, in a perfect world, I feel like probably should have swept it, but it is what it is. Um, I'm a little salty still, but as you can tell, but I'm getting over it very very slowly and probably after i do this video i'll be over it because i want to get all off out of my chest off my chest but let's do it let's go to uh ufc vegas uh 98 um there is 13 fights a lot of these are going to be interesting a lot of last card was the old timer card and this one is more so the um up and coming prospects card so a little bit of a flip there so we'll go to the first one clayton carpenter uh, versus Lucas Rocha and uh, Clayton Carpenter took um, it's been a while since we've seen him but he is a well-rounded guy I, uh, he's got very slick grappling good submissions his striking is pretty good too um, he does like to push forward he always goes for a finish he, do, he is a little hittable at times but uh, very good like I said we haven't seen him in about a year and a half and he uh, submitted he got he got the submission in his last fight but Ro Rocha is making his UFC debut. He's coming off the Contender Series last year with the win. Um, he's a solid striker. He's got good volume with it. He likes to push forward as well. His, his grappling is pretty okay, but he's more so a striker. His takedown defense, though, is a little iffy, and that's going to be the key in this fight uh, because I do think Carpenter is going to have a massive wrestling and grappling advantage. And on the feet, it could be close-ish, but i um, going to go with Carpenter here. I know... Um, Maybe if you look at their record, 17-1 looks really good, not going to lie. But, um, yeah, I got to go with Carpenter. I think he's just the better guy at the moment. Um, he's going to have a clear advantage on the feet. Uh, I'm sorry, on the mat. And I think he gets this one done either by late submission or decision. So I'll just say second or third round submission. I think he gets this one done. Next one is going to be Dan Argueta versus Cody Haddon. Um, we all know who, Co or I'm sorry, Dan Argueta is, but he's a very good wrestler and grappler. He likes to shoot takedowns galore. Um, he's very strong when he gets his hands on you. He's got good top control. He's got good submissions, too. His striking, though, isn't all that great. He's kind of a, a low-volume, overhand right, overhand right kind of striker. He doesn't really have the cleanest technical striking by any means, but it's still okay. Uh, pretty good cardio. He can slow down if he goes at a crazy pace in the third round. But his game plan in every one of his fights is to get this fight to the mat and um, grind, wear you down, and either submit you or win a decision. Uh, Haddon, though, he's making his UFC debut. He just recently fought about um, uh, six weeks ago in the Contender Series, if you watch that. So you probably saw him win early in the first round there. But he fought someone pretty good, though. Uh, but he's a well-rounded guy. He's got good striking. He always pushes forward, too, with a pretty good pace. He's pretty good. He's good on the mat as well. He's got good body shots, good submissions, as you saw. His uh, lone loss was to Steve Ersig, so it's not a bad loss to have. He's 26 years old. And, yeah, this is going to be a fun fight. It's a fun fight to see where Haddon is. Um, and I would, you know, I would... I wish he wasn't fighting Argueta because I want to see him a little bit more with a, like a little bit lesser of a guy. But I do think Haddon can win this fight, um, but it's going to be a tough fight. And I know Argueta isn't the most reliable guy to bet because sometimes he does very good. And then sometimes he makes some questionable decisions and then he loses the fight or he's looking good and then he loses against Gene uh, Matsumoto. Like I said, he was getting those takedowns, 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 and they got guillotined. So... I'm going to go with, like I said, I'm going to go with Haddon to win. I'm going to say this fight does go to decision. I just think the first round might be tough for Cody, but I think as the fight goes on, I think he's got a little bit better uh, cardio, and um, I think he can stuff the takedowns a little bit e easier as the fight goes on too, and I think he can outstrike him on the feet for sure and win that way. So it's going to be, I think, a close decision. Probably wouldn't bet, but give me Haddon to win by decision. It's going to be a close one. Next one's going to be a fun one. Let's put it that way. Chris Barnett versus Junior Taffa. Uh, Barnett, you know, Huggy Bear. He's, a, you know, he's a striker. Let's put it that way. Uh, crazy, impressive spinning kicks for a guy his size. Um, 
but um you know he's not really the gr- most technical striker either he does throw a lot of wild overhands um he does have decent power if he does land he's pretty durable he can slow down as the fight goes on he doesn't really wrestle or grapple but um that's him in a nutshell we got junior tafa though he's taking this fight on short notice I, I feel like every one of his fights he takes on short notice but it is what it is he's a powerful striker he's got pretty quick hands for a heavyweight he's durable um pretty decent cardio his takedown defense is just okay at best but luckily for him he doesn't have to worry about the takedown defense because i don't think chris barnett's shooting anytime soon i know in um tafa's last fight <clears throat> against walter walker he got submitted and it was like three or four seconds before the fight or the round ended. So it was kind of unfortunate there, but um, yeah, I got to go Tafa here. Um, he's going to have, the, he's going to be um, way taller. Doesn't have the reach advantage, which is weird, but um, I think he's just a better, more cleaner striker on the feet. I think he can land more volume. He can land probably the more, the more impactful shots. Maybe you get one or two Barnett crazy spinning attacks that l- might land something, but I don't think it's going to knock out Junior Tafa by any means. And like I said, as the fight goes on, I do think Barnett will slow down and Tafa should win. So give me Tafa to win. I'm going to say second or third round knockout. I um, If the over is set at one and a half, I do like that over. Um, but again, you know, when Tafa is minus 380, it's tough to bet that because he's not really trustworthy either. He's losing these fights too, but he is taking these fights on super short notice and he was able to knock out um, Parker Porter. So that's a pretty decent win there for a heavyweight, but he's losing most of these other ones too. So <clears throat> it's, it's good. It's, it's a good fight to see where he's at, but again, short notice. So I would maybe stay away, but give me Tafa to win by, I say second or third round knockout. Next one's going to be Nico Price versus Themba Garimbo. And yeah, um, Price is a solid striker. He's got decent power. He likes to push forward. He's very high volume, very durable, very tough. He's a grinder. He's got that dog in him, all that good stuff. Fun fighter, decent grappling. Um, yeah, you're always going to fight for your money for sure. And then Garimbo, decent striker himself. Uh, pretty good takedowns and wrestling. Uh, kind of low volume on the feet at times. And uh, he does keep stay at range well if he is on the feet. So that's something to look at. He's fought very good recently. Um, he was able to get the knockout on Pete Rodriguez. He was able to get a decision win against Ramiz. So this is a pretty good step up for him. Not Nothing crazy. It's, he's working his way up. Um, you know, I can see Price getting the upset here, but I'm still going to go with Garimbo. Um, I think he can play. He, he's a safe kind of fighter. Um, Nico's going to have to really push a pace on him. And, um, I think Grimbo can work in some wrestling and grappling too. And on the feet, I think it's pretty even. So, you know, at this stage in Nico's career, I know he's 35, but man, he feels like he's a 40 year old. Um, you know, some of these losses aren't aging well with Robbie Lawler, um, Philip Rowe, but he was able to win a decision against Morono and look very good honestly. So that's something you can hang your head on there. If you like price, I don't blame you. Um, but I think this fight does go to decision. I think Grimbo ever so slightly edges it out. Maybe, um, Nico plus three and a half spread will be a good look when those come out. I'll look at that, but I do think Grimbo wins a decision here. Not very confident, like I said, whatsoever, but that would be the only thing I'd maybe look at is that Nico plus three and a half spread. Next one's an interesting fight as well. Jonathan Pierce versus Pat Sabatini. Um, Jonathan Pierce, well-rounded guy, very good wrestling, good grappling, um, decent striking on the feet. He can get rocked at times here and there, but he's very durable, has good scrambles, good reversals if he is on the mat. And um, yeah, Sabatini, pretty much the same thing. Very, very good grappler, good wrestling, very good top control when he is on top. Um, good takedowns. His striking is pretty good too. The only thing with him is a little, he's a little chinny. That's it. But you know, Diego Lopez wasn't be able to knock him out, but that guy's a crazy animal. Um, Damon Jackson was able to knock him out, but that was a crazy head kick, but he looked good against Lucas Almeida, man. This fight is so close because, you know, I could see advantages from both guys and this is really a pick like a pick i think and that's why the line suggested it's pretty close pat sabatini is a slight um underdog 
man, I keep going back and forth with this one. This might be the toughest one. I'm gonna I'm gonna edge Sabatini. No, 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 scratching it. I'm going Pierce. I'm going Pierce. I'm going with my gut. Um, I wouldn't shock me though if Sabatini uh gets like some kind of choke because we've seen Pierce get choked out with that long neck, not to be mean. But um, I just think the striking, and I just don't know if I trust Sabatini quite yet. I trust Pierce a little bit more so. Like I said, I know Pierce lost against Onama. Very close fight, but it's a different kind of style here. And then Joe Anderson, Brito, he was looking good until he wasn't. So this is a 50-50 fight. It really is, so I don't blame anybody for who they pick here. But I'm going to lean Pierce. I think he gets this one done. I think it does go to decision. You know what? If there is a finish, it probably might be Sabatini by submission or Pierce by knockout. We'll see what happens. Maybe that would be a good bet you could do too. But very close fight. Going to lean Pierce ever so slightly by decision though. Next one, CJ Vergara versus newcomer Rez Aramzan Beck Timurov. So, yeah, CJ Vergara is a good striker. He's a well-rounded guy, um, likes to push forward. He likes to push a pace on his opponents. He's a pretty good grappler and wrestler. Um, pretty durable. He has been rocked from time to time, though. He does have decent cardio. Well-rounded guy. Just He's always going to bring it. And then Timurov, UFC debut. Very, very good striker. Very dangerous with quick hands. Good. Um, always looking for the finish on the feet. His takedown defense is, you know, it's, it's okay. Um, but he's going to keep it on the feet. Um, he can scramble to work himself back up if he gets taken down, but he's not going to like go for any takedowns or anything like that. He's going to keep it on the feet and try to get a finish. But um, yeah, again, fun fight, but I'm going to lean uh, team Rob here. I know he's making his UFC debut, but I like what I saw. He's very dangerous. We've seen uh Vigara against dangerous guys get rocked. He does survive though but I don't know if he's going to be able to survive against him. So I'm going to go team Rob to win probably first or second round knockout. I'll, I'll say, but it wouldn't shock me if this does go to decision one way or another, but I'm going to go with the newcomer here. I think he's a little bit more dangerous. I think he's going to have um, a little bit more power in his hands too, if he lands. So I like what I saw. I'm going to go with team Rob. See what happens. Uh, next one featured prelim Chidi. Uh, Njuku, oh, I'm not Njuku, Njukuani versus Jared Gordon. So Chidi, very good striker. He keeps his range very well. Good elbows and kicks and knees, all that good stuff. He's got good Muay Thai. He can slow down as the fight goes on, but he is at welterweight and he has looked a little bit better with his cardio at welterweight for whatever reason. Um, He can get a little hittable on the feet though. It was a very close fight. Well, actually... It was a pretty decently close fight. I did think Chidi won that fight, but it was very, very close. And um, yeah, and then we got Jared Gooden, um, powerful striker. He can be hittable on the feet, but he is very durable. His takedown defense isn't great, but luckily for him, he doesn't have to worry about that. He can mix in some takedowns here and there of his own, which he might have to. Um, I would say both guys are very dangerous and both guys can get cracked. Um, I would lean jared's durability ever so slightly but i do think chitty's striking is more dynamic it's more um he can use like i said elbows kicks knees jared's more so a boxer he does have the okay leg kicks and stuff but he doesn't have those knees and the elbows and step in elbows all that good stuff so going with chitty here to win i don't know if chitty's going to be able to get a knockout if he does it's going to have to be something pretty like spectacular if you want to say um I don't even know if Jared Gordon has ever been knocked out. Oh, he's been knocked out twice. It's been a while since he got knocked out. If I info, but that was like on a regional scene. So that's probably why I don't remember. And he got knocked out on the regional scene against Bruno Oliveira. So that's why I don't remember seeing him get knocked out because in the UFC has never been knocked out. So I'm going to go cheaty to win. It's going to be, if it does get out of the first or, uh, or over around in the half, which could be another good look. If it is set at one and a half, I would like, the over doesn't sound too bad now that I'm talking about it. Um, you know, it could be a slow, sloppy fight, and it be might be close to the judges because we've seen the crazy judging scorecards. So let's just go with Chidi to win. I'll say by this. 
Uh, I don't know. We're going now. Eh, no, we're going to go decision. My gut says decision, so I'm going to go decision. But it wouldn't shock me if he does get a knockout. Either guy, actually. Main card to start the main card. Interesting fight here. I didn't even know that. Josh Fremd versus Abdul Razak Alazan. And with Josh Fremd, you know, he's a well rounded guy, doesn't do anything amazing, doesn't do anything great, doesn't do anything awful either, but he does have decent grappling. His takedowns are a little sloppy, he does struggle to get those down. His take and his striking is just okay. Um, he does have pretty good submissions but meh but alazan very powerful striker his takedown defense isn't all that great though he does have a little bit of wrestling he can use he showed it off in a couple of his fights but nothing crazy he's gonna probably keep it on the feet does have very powerful kicks powerful punches he's very durable himself um I, yeah i'm gonna go alazan here i like it i don't mind the odds either um i'm not a believer in josh from not to be mean not to say that i don't like him but i just don't think he is ufc He's very bottom of the barrel, let's put that UFC quality. Um, he's a very fringe guy. I think Alazan's dangerous. I think he can get him out of there in the first round. Um, second, third, if it does get into the third round, maybe he can get some grappling going. Maybe Alazan does get taken down. But first and second round, I do think Alazan is very live for a finish, and I do think he gets it. So first or second round knockout for me for Alazan. And we'll go with that. Next one, Daniel Rodriguez versus Alex Morono. Um, battle of the NFL journeyman, if you want to say. But Rodriguez is a very good boxer. Powers, you know, okay. He doesn't really have knockout power. He's 37 years old. He's been injured tons of times. He slows down in his fights now. Um, decent takedown defense. He can get taken down, though. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's going to keep it on the feet. That's where he wants it, and he's going to try to box you. Morono is pretty well-rounded guy. Um, you know, his striking is okay. Can be a little wild at times. He does like to push forward. He can be sloppy and loopy with his striking as the fight goes on. He has a tendency to jump gilly all the time, like Dustin Poirier, which does sometimes lose him rounds that way. But he does have decent cardio and volume. Um, but he is durable and he can be a little hittable too. Um, yeah, I'm very intrigued as to why this line is set at the way it is where Rodriguez is two and two to one favorite. Um, I think this is a 50 50 fight personally. I think this is like court McGee versus Tim means like that kind of 50 50 fight. I can see both guys winning. So going with the gut again, I don't trust Daniel Rodriguez right now in his career. And um, for whatever reason, Morono always wins the close fights. So I think this fight could play out very close. And um, I know he didn't beat Nico Price, but I don't think he it was that close of a fight. And um, I'm going to go with Morono to win. I'm going to go with the underdog here. This is going to be my biggest underdog of the night. Um, yeah, I think third round is going to be key here. Um, I think Rodriguez slows down more, and I think Morono can um, set a pace and win the third round. So the first and second rounds are going to be the iffy ones for me. I don't know who's going to win those. Um, but I think Morono can win round three for sure. So I'm going to go with Morono to win. I'll say by decision, but it wouldn't shock me if it's like a third round finish because Rodriguez is just a little gassed. Maybe he kind of like in the Magni fight where he was just looking okay, looking good. And then Magni was able to get a darts choke on him at the last second. Like I could see something like that. Maybe Morono jumps a gilly in the third round and, and Rodriguez uh, taps, you know, something like that. But I'll say Morono by decision. but. Let's go. Next one, Corey McKenna versus Juliana Palastri. Interesting though why this one's on the main card, but it is what it is. McKenna's a very good grappler, uh, good, decent um, takedowns. Her striking is meh. It's not great, but she is pretty durable. She does have decent cardio. I do question, question her game plans and her fight IQ. Um... Jacqueline Amorum jumped right into Jacqueline Amorum's guard and got armbarred. Awful. Uh, Elise Reed didn't shoot a takedown until the third round. Terrible. Now, these girls that she beat here, you know, probably should have beat. I think she should have beat all four of these. But that's why I said it's hard. 
to, you know, pick or bet her when she doesn't have the greatest fight IQ. But anyways, we got Juliana uh, Palastri. Short notice. She is taking this fight on somewhat short notice. Um, McKenna was supposed to fight Pollyanna, but she's well-rounded. Solid striking, okay power in her hands. Her takedown defense isn't all that great, which is that's that could be a little bit problem. But she does have decent wrestling and grappling herself to stay safe. I don't think she's going to do anything crazy, but she's going to have the better striking for sure. So this is who you think is going to win. Um, do you think McKenna can get the takedowns? Do you trust her game plan? And do you trust her fight IQ? If you do, she's a dog. There you go. I personally don't, but... I don't like that Pulaski is taking this fight on short notice. And um, I do think maybe the takedowns come easy for McKenna as the fight goes on because she's a little tired. But I like Pulaski better on the feet. And um, I think early on she can stop the takedowns at least. So this fight's probably going to go to decision. And I'll say Pulaski wins a very close one too. Um, just not there yet with McKenna. I thought she'd be, I don't know. I don't know. I thought she'd be a little bit better where she's at. You know, she's still 25, not to say that she's she can't improve, but, you know, like three or at least two and a half years ago, I thought she'd be at least a little better from from that fight till now. So going with Plastry to win, like I said, by decision. Next one, Grant Dawson versus Rafa Garcia. And yeah, so we got Dawson, who's a very, very good grappler, very good submissions when he does get the fight to the mat. Pretty, pretty okay takedowns. Um, sometimes he does have to work to get those. His striking is okay, but make no mistake about it. He wants to get this fight to the mat. He wants to grapple you. He wants to get. He wants to take the back, and he wants to get a rear naked choke. That's his bread and butter. That's his game plan every fight. Um, good cardio. Um, he can be chinned. We saw <laughs> against Bobby Green, which was st it still shocks me, but it is what it is. And then Garcia, he's a well-rounded guy himself. He does have good boxing, good power, um, decent wrestling and grappling himself, good cardio, very durable. Um, you know, his takedown defense is okay. So that's what worries me a little bit. He's never been finished in his career. Um, yeah, I I'm going Dawson, but that line is crazy because you are literally banking on Dawson winning a by decision. And these UFC judges, I know we talked about it a lot lately anyways, that you just don't know. You can't trust. I mean, if, if Dawson was like a minus 150, sure, the money line 150, okay. But if you're going to put Dawson in parlays, you're going to be sweating it especially because this fight's probably going to go to decision and it's going to be close and Garcia's going to be better on the feet, I think, but the grappling is going to be Dawson. And I do think Dawson can get takedown. So like I said, going to go with Dawson, but I'm staying away from this fight. I don't really trust Dawson really. Cause he just makes fights super boring and those kind of fighters can make fights super close. And if you're going to leave it to the clo close fights to the judges nowadays, can't do it. So Dawson by decision is my pick. But I don't know. I mean, Garcia has a chance, but I just think the grappling is going to be too much for Dawson. It's going to be close. So see what happens. Co-main, this fight was supposed to happen a while ago. Don't remember how long, maybe a couple months ago, but it is what it is. Brad Tavares versus Jung Young Park, the Iron Turtle. Tavares got good, solid striking with decent power. Very good takedown defense. He can wrestle too, but he's probably not going to. Good cardio. He can be a little chinny, um, but he has fought very powerful strikers when he is some when he does get rocked. So it is what it is. But he can take a pretty decent amount of good shots before he gets knocked out. It's not like he's getting knocked out with one shot. Um it's more of an accumulation, and then he does get knocked out. Uh, Park, though, good, decent grappler, good boxing, uh, good jab. He's a little small for the for the weight class, but he does have good cardio. He's pretty durable himself, and um, when he does get on top of you, he's he does keep you down, and he does have good top control. So, um, yeah, this is, you know, like I said, this fight was supposed to happen about maybe a couple months ago. And I picked Tavares, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with that. Um, I I don't really remember the reason why Park um, was 
that was scratched. Like, cause he did weigh in, he looked fine. And then right before at right after that, they announced that park withdrew for whatever reason. I don't know if he was injured or if he had something wrong with him, but I'm not taking that into effect all that much, but it's something to think about if you are picking um, park, I don't know what happened, but I'm going with Tavares again. I just think he's going to be able to stuff the takedowns and I think he's a better striker and it's going to be close. Um, I will say right now, Tavares plus three and a half is probably the play of the card. I don't think this fight's going to, there's going to be a finish. I think Tavares will win one round for sure. And Park, whether he wins or loses, I don't think he's going to get a finish. And I don't think he's going to win 30 27 either. So give me Tavares to win by decision, though, for my pick. And um, we'll go from there. And then we got the main event, which is a very, very good main event. Brandon Royval versus Tatsuro Tyra. And, you know, Royval, super dangerous guy, very good submissions, very good grappling. He's very good striker. He's very tricky. He's got good elbows, good step and knees. Um, he can be rocked. He can be hittable, though, if he gets caught and countered. But um, he's very dangerous everywhere, though. He always pushes forward. He's got very good cardio. And if he does get taken down, he doesn't accept it. He tries to work himself back up. He can eventually probably get back up, but he doesn't accept it. And he's very dangerous off his back too. Tyra also very good grappler, very good submissions. His striking is pretty good, solid, technical. Um, he's very patient on the feet, which I do like to see. Um, he all every once in a while he can get a, clipped, but we haven't seen anything crazy where he's like. I think well, maybe the Chara's fight. I think I remember he did get rocked or dropped i can't remember if it eat one or the other but he's pretty durable good cardio himself and yeah this is going to be a fun fight it's a good test for him obviously because if he wins this fight he's probably going to be next in line for the belt he's 24 years old but i'm questioning if this is going to be a little bit too big of a step up i know i said this when he was when he fought alex perez um freak injury happened there so i'm not taking that away from tatsuro but I would like to see where that fight would have went. But again, you know, Alex Perez isn't all that great. I think Brandon Roy Val beats Alex Perez nine out of 10 times. So this is a pretty big step up. I'm going to go with Roy Val. And I like Tara. Don't get me wrong. I, I hope he wins. I hope he wins the belt. I think he's great. I mean, I do love me some uh, Pantoja too, as well. I mean, I'm not going to root against Pantoja, but if there was someone to beat Pantoja, I would hope it's Tyra because I can root for him as well. I like him as a fighter, but I'm just not sure if he's ready for this competition, like, like step up with Roy Val. Roy Val is very dangerous. I think he could win um, by submission. I think he win by knockout and I think he could win by decision. He can win anyway. Same thing with Ty or Tyra though, as well. So, Gonna go with Roy Val though. He's the dog plus 165. I think that's a good good line. Um if this fight was closer, maybe I would bet Tyra or pick him. But even what like I said, it doesn't really matter about the lines with my pick. I just think it's gonna be a, a big step up for Tyra. I want to see if he passes it. So Roy Val, I'll say I'll say by decision, but there's gonna be some crazy moments in this fight where you know, maybe Tyra gets close to being getting Royval knocked out. Maybe Royval is very close to getting Tyra submitted or something like that. But both these guys are very, very, very good. So I'm going to go by decision and Royval is going to ever so slightly edge it out unless the judges say otherwise. Let's put it that way. But all righty, that is it. Those were the 13 fights for UFC Vegas 98. I know we went a little bit longer in this one, almost 40 minutes, but it is what it is. I had to go over all my saltiness from UFC 307. Thank you, everybody, for watching, though. Please hit the like button. Leave some comments below. It helps the video out a ton. Wednesday night, obviously, is Defend Your Units. So definitely check us out, me and Cody from Blood Money MMA Bets. Uh, we always do our breakdowns Wednesday nights. Saturday before the fights, we'll probably have another um, live show as well, giving you our best bets, all that good stuff too. So definitely check it out. Hit the notifications so you know who and when, where, why, and all that good stuff. So appreciate you hanging out with me for a little bit. Good luck with your picks. Hope the judges don't ruin your bets this week as well. Let's go. Happy